We're on it. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, talk about coming to Daytona uh, and uh, almost at the midpoint of the season and uh, your outlook for this weekend, and we'll take a few questions. For us, it's, uh, it's easy. Come down here and uh, let it rip. Just have fun. Go for the win. Uh, it is a wild card race. We understand that you know, anybody in the draft has a shot at winning the race. Um, we have enough wins that we can uh, throw caution to the wind if it's strategy on track, you know, really whatever it is. You know, our goal is to come here and, and put ourselves in position to win and uh, hopefully enter that white flag lap you know, in that front row in the first couple of positions and uh, have a shot at winning the race. All right, we'll take questions. We'll start with Ed, then we'll go to Alan, and then to Kelly. Ed, Ed there's the mic right there, pal, right in front of you. Ed, Alan, and Kelly. <laughs> uh, Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Jimmy, last year you came here and did what hadn't been done in 30-odd years and swept both Daytona events. Uh, now Dale Jr. is in the, in the same position. Uh, for Hendrick Motorsports as a team, for Dale Jr., for NASCAR, uh, how significant would you think it would be if Dale Jr. could sweep uh, and, and win Saturday, win, yeah, Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought of it in that perspective, but an Earnhardt winning in Daytona is huge, period. Um, then we can break down through you know, multiple other, <clears throat> excuse me, reasons why it would be, be meaningful, meaningful and impactful for everybody involved. Um, you know, if, if I don't have a chance to win the race, I, sh I wouldn't mind if he did. So I I'm more focused on myself and the 48 win in the race, but he's going to be fast, he's going to be strong and I have a very good opportunity to win. You know, the stat, you know, went 30 years for a reason. It's not easy because, you know, plate racing, anything can happen. So, uh, you know, if he can make it to the white flag lap, and, and he's the one that gave me that phrase about if I make it to the white, um, you know, and, and you're in that picture, the finish line picture, you got a shot at winning. So, um, you know, if he can make it to the white, he's definitely going to be a threat. We'll go with Alan, Kelly, and Nate Ryan. Alan, come on at NASCAR.com. I got an Earnhardt-related question, too, right here, Jimmy. Oh, um, for the 88 team, what, what's more telling or, or imp I don't know, impressive or surprising? Is it the, the checkered flags, or is it runs like Kentucky and Sonoma, where they may surprise you, with the, you know, at the end of the day with the performance that they're getting? <clears throat> That's a good question. I, I'm, I guess at the end of the day, our sport's measured by, by trophies and checkered flags, so I'd have to put, it, put more weight in that column. But, um, you know, Junior's been in the sport a long time and has been a championship contender at various points in his career. And uh, to be able to cover, you know, all sides of the game is important. So to check the box for winning races, check the box for being fast, check the box on tracks that historically aren't good for you, um, overcoming, you know, early issues in an event. You know, those are the things that seem to kind of get people talking about, you know, that's, that's a championship run. And, and we're seeing that. Um, much more consistent, and then also the, the trips to victory lane, which is great for him. Yeah. We'll go Kelly, Nate, and then Bob Pockris. Raise your hand there, Kelly, and Nate, then Bob Pockris. Kelly Crandall from Popular Speed. Jimmy, you and Chad both said at the beginning, beginning of the year that you were a little behind on the 214 package, um, but in the last seven races, you've got three wins, have finished no worse than 10th, and have led over 500 laps. So curious if you're still feeling that way, and if so, what is, what is the 48 team still working on? Yeah, we still have some ground to make up. I, I feel the four car is uh, really the, the most consistent car with speed off the truck. Uh, the Penske guys, you know, seem to be able to create some really big speed at times, maybe not as consistent as the four. And then we've, uh, we've been able to get there by Sunday. And in a lot of weekends, it hasn't been a fun journey, you know, unloading and, and searching and finding our way come race time. But uh, even with that challenge, we're still pulling into victory lane and, and collecting a lot of points. So uh, that's the part we need to clean up. And, and we're very aware of it inside the team that uh, unloading on Friday with speed in the car is, is really the area we need to zero in on. Um, we try to look back and reflect and say, well, you know, we've done a great job as, as a team showing up off and finding our way there. So there's plenty to be proud of. But come chase time, you can't show up and unload on the right side of the scoring monitor and then find your way to victory lane. It's just you're putting yourself too far behind the eight ball. So luckily we have a couple months to, to really kind of advance and, and get our cars where they need to be. We'll go to Nate, Bob Pockers, and Dinah Polk. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Uh, Jimmy, uh, when the Daytona 500 got restarted in February, it was 
really intense racing. Like I said, it was probably like the most intense racing they've, they've ever done here. Um, but yeah, Tal Talladega was sort, sort of a weird race where I, I know you spun out like inexplicably and there were some, some crazy wrecks, but then it kind of had a muted finish and eight, the 88 couldn't get forward. Have, have you noticed any trends this year in restrictor plate racing from either of those two races to take forward into Saturday night? Is there anything we saw February or, or at Talladega that, that would tell us anything about what Saturday might look like? Or You know, the, the only trend I'm confident in speaking about would be that, you know, the, the issue of track position in Daytona is far greater than in Talladega. There's so much more room. If you slip back, you seem to find your way to the front much easier in Talladega than you do here. But I, I can't explain why some races are, are more exciting. Um, some races we, you know, whoever the leader is decides to run around the top and we sit up there on a 43 car line. Um, I, I don't know why. And it's crazy because it takes more than just one driver to make that decision and to help help lead that. But there's kind of an energy on the track or a vibe that is assumed by all drivers after a while. And you either get caught up in the uh, excitement and it's a real racy event or it falls into more of a ride around the top event. And I don't know what triggers that. It's real tough to follow that. Did, did February seem like there was more energy? Did it seem like there was more of that? Yeah, I, I think the 500, you know, brings that out. And then obviously we, we had the threat of rain. And uh, for whatever reason, when, when the momentum changes, when we all decide it's time to race, it's exciting. When we all decide to ride, it's really boring. So, you know, whatever direction it's going, it's going to go there. You know, there isn't really an in-between, it seems like. So um, we'll, we'll see what unfolds on Saturday night. It's just so hard to predict it. Let's go Bob Pockris, Dinah, and then Brant James. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. Uh, a couple of weeks ago after Sonoma, Dale Jr. had said that he told Latart that Maybe the secret to being a great crew chief is to call every race like it's your last year because that seems to help uh, <laughs> with strategy. But I'm curious, when you have good cars, how much easier is it to have good strategy or is it not? It, it is most of the time. Um, that There are some tracks where there are, you know, tire strategy comes into play and you, um, you can maybe take a risk on two. And, and we've, we've had that issue a few times where we've had a dominant car and we get to the end, the last pit stop, and 10 to 15 cars decide to go with two tires versus four. And we're the leader. It's been easy, uh, dominant. We'll take four. Won't take a risk. And the numbers of guys that put two on end up beating us. So, and that's, you know, that's not every track, but that's really the only thing you have to look out for. Outside of that, um, you know, I, I think having a fast car creates a lot of opportunity for you. Um, and really puts you in an offensive position, and that's what Chad likes so much. And in most situations, even if we lose a couple of spots, he'd rather have me on four. And we've got a fast enough car, and you just start thinking, we've got a fast enough car, we're on four, they're on two, we can get to the front, and, and you start thinking of it you know, down that road. But every now and then, 10 or 15 guys will take two, and you're on four, and, and you just can't get back to the front. Let's go with uh, Dinah, Brant, and then Seth. Hey, Dinah Pulver with the Daytona Beach News Journal. I, I wondered if you have a strategy for Twitter or if you just do Twitter for fun and, and what it is that you enjoy about it, because clearly you get a lot of interest with some of your things like the little Disney princess dresses this week. It's pretty cute. <laughs> it's, it's really random. There's nothing behind it that is organized. Um, I could use a, a real and true person to spell check and proofread for me. Sometimes I go back through and think, man, what? I was in too big of a hurry and let that fly out. But uh, it's it's in between, you know it's pretty random and there there are weeks where I go and I just nothing comes to mind or right? that the thought process doesn't happen where I w think to share uh, or just too busy and, and can't share but uh, it's a big part of you know the world today you know our, we put a lot of time and effort into our digital platform uh, starting with our website right up through all the social channels so uh, you know it's something that I personally have invested in um, my sponsors you know have their own sites and things as well but you know where in the position i am today controlling and owning my own digital platform and, and really taking care of it's important yep brant right here raise your hand get him the mic please uh, brant james espn.com who do you consider the elite group of restrictor plate racers not just in terms of trophies but you know always being in the mix not making the big mistake just sort of getting it with this form of racing the uh gosh i think 20 um 
four seems to be there. If in, he's in the four of the 29, you know, that, that car. And Kevin seems to always always put himself in position. Um, 24, the a uh, little more on the, the erratic side, but always has plenty of speed would be the 18. You know, he's he's always a threat, but to see the, you know, some wild things seem to happen for him. Um, but I, I guess God put at the top of the list is the 20, and, and that might just reflect back to last year. It seemed like the 20 and the 48 were the two strongest cars on all the plate tracks, and we just kind of follow each other. He'd lead, I would lead. So first one is probably the 20 as of now. Let's go to uh, Seth. Raise your hand, Seth. Seth Livingstone, Esca News Service. Jimmy, you know, going into Fourth of July weekend, everybody feels a little patriotic, but not everybody gets to shake hands with the president leading into the weekend. What's it like? Uh, what kind of experience is it like to go into D.C. and shake hands with the president? You guys on a first name basis yet, or what? No, no first name basis, but. The experience was amazing to share it with my family. Um, was uh, was was awesome. And in a few moments of, of private time we all had together, it was something I'll, I'll cherish forever. And uh, you know, when I, I think of how things have changed since our last championship, my last championship, every driver in the, that made the chase went. This time, when we went a week or so ago, it was just the members of the 48 team. So it was really nice to to let you know some of the guys. There's still plenty back in the shop, but to let. 15 of them come and share and experience uh, that huge honor. Let's go to uh, the gentleman, I think, in the green. Did you have a question, sir? Go ahead. Hi, Jimmy. MK Hicks with NASCAR Productions. Um, a bit of a preview question with Indy coming up. You've had a lot of success there. Um, how do you feel about going there? Excited for Indy. That's been a, a good track for us the last, I don't know, five or eight years. Took me a long time to figure that racetrack out, and once we kind of zeroed in on, once I zeroed in on how to drive the car, then I could give Chad the right feedback so we can make the car fast. And you know, the f first five times or so that I went there, I was driving the car wrong until race time, and then in the race, we didn't have enough adjustability in the car to get the car right. So uh, if that's probably one of the most driver-sensitive tracks that we go to. And uh, looking forward to going back. We had a, had a nice opportunity last year. Um, came up, you know, a little short in second, and uh, hopeful to go back and and uh, hopefully break the record there. Don Cobble, did you have a question? Raise your hand, please. Jimmy Don Cobble with Morris News Service. Um, I know you you like to win everywhere, um, but it, how much? Dip, where does the the four hundred rank on the? you know, the list of importance. I mean, because it's Daytona, is it still kind of viewed a little bit higher than other races? Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to rank them. You know, and, and tracks have different meanings for different drivers, uh, different team members. You know, all of us have, have tracks that are fond to us for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, winning in Daytona is always a, a special thing. If it's an IROC race or a I've tried many times here in a Grand Am car to win. If it was the six-hour event in the summer or the, the Rolex 24, um, hell, I wouldn't mind winning a big wheel race in the infield. You know, wouldn't bother me a bit to win in Daytona. So for me, I, you know, it's it's up there on the list for sure. Um, you know, we go through our majors and can argue, you know, what tracks kind of fit into that category. I, I don't feel that this July race is really in that category, but um, I think it's a, a fun race because of the weekend it falls on. And we're able to run patriotic paint schemes and say thank you to the men and women that uh, defend and serve for us, you know, and celebrate Independence Day. So, you know, that, that definitely jazzes things up and, and pushes it up the list. Chris, probably the final question <clears throat> as we await Dale Earnhardt Jr. Go ahead. Chris Nightcatchfans.com. Jimmy Tyro Clary ran his first uh, racing event this past Tuesday at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He seems pretty confident and has a pretty strict timeline of what he wants to accomplish in a racing career. And he's leaned on you as um, a mentor. Uh, how do you? How's your relationship with Tyler? And, and do you feel like that he will accomplish what he set out to do? Yeah, he's definitely um, you know involved in motorsports, <clears throat> has a passion for it. Uh, but the cool thing is to to know that. His, his real passion's coming up in 2016, and everything's building up to that. Um, and as I've been able to advise him, I've just encouraged him to get seat time. And you really get one opportunity in the nationwide truck nationwide or cup. 
you know, obviously you'd probably get his first start in a truck or, or maybe nationwide. And, and when you go there, you've got a short time frame. So I've, I've encouraged him just whatever he can find to put his rear in, to run laps and understand, you know, what wedges, what rebound does to the car, roll center height, sway bars, you know, and really just get ingrained in that and, and to have fun without the pressure of a big sponsor waiting in the wings and, you know, national media uh, paying attention to you. You know, that, that's a lot of pressure that's tough to overcome, and every small mistake you make ends up national news. So I'm, I'm happy that he's out and enjoying himself. Um, you know, of course, he has a vision and, and a plan, which I, I'm, I think is important, and um, hopefully it all come together for him. And, and first and foremost, hopefully he's holding up gold in, in 2016. Yep. Jimmy, thank, thanks for coming in. Good luck this weekend. You got it.